When it comes to the Sanders campaign's Iowa organizing strategy, they are making sure that an often overlooked Iowa demographic shows up tonight. There were 22 Latino organizers on the ground in the state, according to Sanders' senior advisor, Chuck Rocha. He joins us now from Des Moines to expand on that. It's Chuck himself. Great to see you, Chuck, friend of the show. Hey, it's good to be here. Absolutely. Chuck, I mean, we have been talking to you now with months. As I was saying to you in the break, it's hilarious to watch kind of the mainstream media be like, where did all these people come from? And I'm like, well, <laughs> uh, we, we knew it all along. Chuck, give us some of the behind the scenes for today. What does everybody need to watch for? We're watching for organizing ground games. What do we need to watch for on the first alignment? And what are the inside signs that you as somebody on the inside know there's going to be the key to victory tonight? We've been out studying for a final for a long time, and today is test day, boys and girls. So we've been building infrastructure. Now, we talk about it on the show, and people are like, well, what is infrastructure, and how important is that? Today, at one time across the entire state, we need to move people to like 1,700 lo caucus locations all at the same time. That's a logistical nightmare. And we've been working now for almost a year to get that done. And tonight it will all come to fruition. And that's why the organization is so key. And that's why you see Senator Sanders surging. That's why we've been here. There's a lot of things that's been going on behind the scenes. And even on your show, as you and Crystal have been talking about, I couldn't talk about because I couldn't let the other campaigns know what we were doing. It was a sneak <laughs> attack. And the Latino vote piece of this is a very much sneak attack. It's like everybody in the mainstream media woke up like two days ago, started calling my phone like, oh, my God, Chuck, we heard there's brown people in Iowa. <laughs> So true. Yeah. Because look, Iowa is an overwhelmingly white state, but it is not 100% white, 100. and there's about a 6% uh, Latino demographic. Just take us through what you've been doing in terms of outreach to this group and why you see them as so critical to potential victory tonight. Well, the key is when people say, Chuck, what is your strategy? What's the inside scoop on how you get Latinos to vote? And I go, okay, get your pen, get your paper. Here we go. Ask them. <laughs> people are like, what do you mean? I'm like, you go and ask them to vote for you. Nobody has ever come to our communities and started early asking them, talking to them, tell them about the issues, tell them explaining who Bernie Sanders is and what he stands for. So the key to this was we started almost nine months ago talking to Latinos in Iowa. That means not just putting one organizer on the ground, as you said in the lead up, 22 organizers on the ground. And to support them, we started sending mail to them. We've sent, and this is gonna be the first time I've said this number on any broadcast, we sent almost seven hundred thousand pieces of bilingual mail to wow. every latino registered voter in this state 15 different times hmm. so that means every week they got something from the campaign then they open up their spanish newspaper i've been in every spanish newspaper in iowa for six months in every issue when they hmm. turn on their radio on their way to work i've been on spanish language radio and pandora spanish language for four months this is how you run a real mobilization effort. If you have the infrastructure on the ground and support it with a robust air game to talk about your candidate, you probably can get more than folks show up who'd showed up before. Wow, that's fascinating, multifaceted there in order to get it done. So, Chuck, take us into also the second alignment. So, actually, we do want to get your reaction. Some of these campaigns have been leaking that they're going to be upset if the Sanders campaign were to tout the victory of the first alignment. First, just let's get your reaction to that. <laughs> well, imagine that we're going to tout a victory of who gets the most votes and gets the most people to show up. That's kind of <laughs> phenomenal, right? I thought that's how we work this in a democracy. It's like whoever has the most people should win. Somebody should go tell Donald Trump that. Anyway, yeah. I digress. I get upset. This is a crazy morning for all of us. But realignment is going to be a big deal. And for all of you kids at home studying this and figuring it out, there's going to be a lot of people, if you watch the polls, if you don't get to 15%, you literally got to pick somebody else. So mm -hmm. think about where Biden has been, where Buttigieg has been. And even Elizabeth Warren in many precincts, they're at 13, 14, 15%. That means you could be one person away from being viable in a precinct. That means that your candidate gets no delegates and you have to vote again and you have to take all of those people and go be with somebody else for the second alignment. And that's the key probably to the delegate math that people want to say is going to happen. That's such a complicated matrix. But at the end of the day, that's simply it. They're going to record the first number on who showed up. But on the second count, all of those Andrew Yangs, Tulsi Gabbards, looks like a lot of Joe Biden, they've got to go somewhere else. And we welcome them into the Bernie Sanders camp. Mm -hmm. So, Chuck, how are you looking to, at tonight? I mean, look, the polls show you all up. It looks like your campaign surged at the right time. Is tonight a must win? Tonight's going to be a big night. I was just sitting here looking at my phone, and I just got a field update that we're going to have probably close to 2,000 shifts filled today across the state. 
That means that we're going to have folks out volunteering, going door to door and working shifts, one shift after another shift after another shift. This is the key to turning them out. And what we're going to be looking at are in places that we know we're going to be strong. So that's going to be places in the college campuses. What people also hadn't talked about in this campaign, because we didn't want to until today, is that not only in the Latino neighborhoods, but on these college campuses, we trained army of college organizers all through the summer from those universities. And guess who was sitting in the parking lot and waiting for college people to show up for their fall semester were hundreds of Bernie Sanders paid organizers who've been organizing on those college campuses now since the fall semester began. Yeah. Wow. It's amazing, Chuck, really to watch. I think you guys have built an organization reminiscent, maybe even surpassing Obama in 2008. So we're excited to see the results tonight. Yeah. Good luck, Chuck. Yeah. Thank you. And thank to everybody out there who's been following this program. And to you, Sagar and Crystal, as mm. I've traveled around this state right now and been with Bernie, you should know that you have people all over Iowa who have said to me, I really love getting my news on Rising, Chuck. We <laughs> like watching you on there. It's good to see a fair reporting on everything that's going on. So know that folks in Iowa, well, I've had everybody from old mm. folks and young folks come up to me and go, I really like that rising show. So kudos to you for what y'all built. <laughs> that's awesome. Thank you, Chuck. We love really to hear that. that. Thank, Thank you, you, Chuck. All right. Next up on Rising, our all-star panel brings their predictions for tonight. Plus, we're going to dive into the latest polling out of Iowa. That is next.